Hi, I'm Susie. I've been inspired by the fashion icon Christian Louboutin. Oh, those shoes. <laughs> I'm going to do acrylic sculpted on the underside and gel on the top side. Let's get started. So I prepared these nails by shortening them and taking them down this way so we can build on top. So we're going to start with the underside. I'm going to do a gold color and red. I think I'll just do one with the gold and I'm going to choose this beautiful glittery red. This is by Magnetic. Now they have several golds that I can choose from too and I've put some samples on the top. I think I'm going to pick the bright glitter so you can really see it underneath if you ever catch a glimpse of it. Okay, so these are the two I'm going to start with. So we'll just do one as the accent underneath for the gold and the rest will be the traditional, just like the shoe, red. I've got my liquid in a container here. And I've got two brushes I'm going to go between just sort of show you the difference. One is a big fat oval and one is a square. So the forms I have, you can use any form. Again, you can use any color red, any liquid, any brush you want. These are one of my favorite forms, but I can't resist how pretty these ones are. So let's try one of these. I'm just gonna use this one. It's a standard form that they have. It's just super, super pretty. Okay, so I'm going to form this nail. I do have a video on forming. That's quite an involved situation, so. We won't get into it here because it's going to be long enough with all the sculpting and colors we have to do. You can check that video out if you like. But forming with a paper form is crucial to how it's going to turn out. So the beauty of this design is the underside is a different color than the top side. I've noticed most people try to accomplish it with polish, which is an easy way to do it. But I just wanted to do something different in acrylic. Okay, so I'm just gonna get my brush saturated with the monomer. Now, you can lay in the French line. We're not looking for that so much, it doesn't really matter. But I'm gonna show you that I'm just gonna lay in, I'm collecting my red. It's a beautiful red, it's one of my favorite reds. And I'm just gonna lay that in. And I'm gonna do this quite thin. I don't want this to be very, very thick. Now I happen to file my nail in that French fashion. I've got a very high hyponychium, which is the little skin that's under the nail. So I couldn't file them too short down because I would file into that skin and it would hurt. So I had to leave them just a tiny little bit. It's seemingly longer because of that. So I'm gonna do these in a coffin shape. I thought the coffin would be great because you really would be able to see that color underside. Now the reason why I don't lay a clear layer down first is because it's not on the natural nail and there's no need to. I want these to be quite thin and I find that once we remove the form when you flip it underneath, the red will be absolutely stunning and super shiny. You don't need a clear layer in between. A lot of people will lay the clear down first, but you don't need to. What the heck, we're just gonna go for it long. Beauty. And like I say, I'm not looking for the French line in there so much. It just naturally fell into that position just because of the way it's shaped. Okay. As that setting, I'm just gonna put a form on my next finger. And we'll do the gold now. I'm gonna do the gold on this one. This is usually the finger we use as an accent. Now let's bring out this gold for a second. So you wanna make sure you get the red out of the brush that you're working with now. Now, I could just go and do all the red right now and then do the gold secondary, but I just want to get it done now. I'm going to see what it looks like. So I'm going to clean out the red out of my brush. I don't want any red residue in there at all. So just soak it with monomer a bit. 
you can see as you're twirling it, you're getting rid of all the red residue. Okay. So I'm just gonna get my gold bead. My skin tone doesn't really look good with gold nails. I've worn them before. I've even done them on a couple of videos and my skin tone just doesn't suit it. But I think the underside with the top being black is going to be gorgeous. You can do this with any length that you want. I'm just going to do it long so we can visually really see it in a very strong fashion. Sort of like a high heel shoe. It's not a low heel, it's a high heel. Okay, now I still have three other nails to do, but just for getting on with this, I want to show you how the clear goes down. Now I'm going to actually switch out brushes and just show you. I mostly work with an oval, but for the first few years of my career, I used a square brush and I loved it. And you know, I don't know if the oval brushes were just around and we just didn't use it, but when they came in, I thought I'd try it and I liked it too but the oval shape is really my favorite. So we're just putting a clear bead on top. And what we're trying to do is create structure and the arch and encase this color completely over top. So you could do this with a heavily pigmented acrylic, but it's not very strong in structure, so you do want to put a clear layer over top of it anyway. And I find sometimes it just doesn't look as clean and crisp as a gel coat. So if I look at them sideways, you can see how this structure has been built. You can see how this is so thin, there's no structure, this will break in a second. So that's what I'm putting on top. I'm giving it a nice, clear structure. So you can see this, you can do this with a square brush, no problem. It's just really a preference. It's, neither one is not wrong or right, it's just simply a preference. just coating that colored acrylic very evenly so we have nice and strong structure there. That's the secret to good nails. Right there, that's the big ticket. Making sure you have proper structure, no matter what design you've built. Some people get kind of wrapped up in the design, but it's not what a nail technician is made of. It certainly is a asset and a facet of a nail technician, but it's not the only thing we do. The structure is the number one thing.
No matter how beautiful you've made that design, you may be the most amazing artist ever. If it's not designed and built with perfect structure, if it breaks, your client will be very disappointed. You spend a lot of money and time. You want to make sure whatever design you put on there is going to last with the structure of your nail. So I'm just looking at my red one and it's kind of wimpy in here and here. So I'm just going to put this in here and I'm just going to fill in the parts that I feel are a bit wimpy for structure. Just remember, even if you build it, what you think is too thick, it doesn't matter. You can just file it. That's where the sculpting comes in. You just file it to whatever you want. Just make sure you have enough product there. That's the ticket. You can always add if you want to, but I hate getting everything all out again after I've already put it away. There's a little dip there, so I'm just going to put that in there. See that? And to be perfect, sometimes I'll look down the barrel of it, make sure it's nice and even and there's no little dips. And I'll check the sides too, make sure they're good. Because I'm right-handed, I always can see my right side really clearly. So sometimes you really gotta flip it on that other side, the left-hand side, and make sure that you've got it. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with the gold one, just make sure, looks good. So the red and the gold are actually very dry now. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the three. a size 12 oval brush I normally work with a I prefer a 6 or an 8 you don't really need anything bigger than a 10 I just wanted to see what it was like I want to do a video on it <laughs> so I wanted to show the differences so now I have some experience more with it it's just not necessary to have such a big brush it just can carry too much liquid and if you don't know a liquid to powder ratio very well a big brush can really throw you off and you can see even though I have a big brush I'm still just grabbing the product on the tip. I mean, there's, there's just no reason to have such a giant brush. So I don't really recommend it. So let me clean up all this mess and we'll start sculpting with the file. Just gonna pop on a little mask. So I've got my drill and I'm not gonna turn it up too high. I don't believe that the the higher you go, the better you can file. That's not true. So I'm going to make this a coffin. I'm going to try to determine my length. I don't think we should make them crazy long. I definitely want to make them long. So I'm going to determine my length. I think about there. And then I'm going to start shaping the sides. This has got a smooth top on it. You see that drill bit? Nice smooth top. There's no teeth on that end of it. The teeth are all on the side parts. So you can get into spots like this. Now I'm going to do a coffin. So I'm going to taper it in a fair bit. And I'm going to do that with the drill just to save my arm. And I'm going to taper this in a bit. You just want to take those corner edges off. And then I'm going to file the top. I tend to go back and forth just because this way you can just put grooves in it. But I will go back and forth to sort of keep that real smooth, you know, barrel top motion. So now I'm going to take my file 
and I'm going to make sure that that is super, super square on the end. If you want to make sure that you're making a square shape, don't angle the file underneath. You want to angle it completely flat against it. Make sure that's super square. Coffins are a little bit hard to do. You have to really work a coffin because you're doing it off. You're trying to do a perfect shape off of an imperfect organic structure, which is the finger. They can throw you off a bit. It takes a bit of practice. Now I'm ready to put the gel polish and I'm going to use a black color because that's the traditional Louis Vuitton look. I'm just going to clean it with a little bit of alcohol first on a pad just to get rid of any dust. I like to do that before I polish with gel just to make sure you have no dust on there. And sometimes you got to really get it in the cuticle because sometimes if it sits in the cuticle when you put your brush on it'll pull it into play. Don't want that. Okay, so working with Bio Seaweed Gel. Never worked with it before. Seems like a very nice gel polish. So I'm going to gently get it as close to the cuticle without touching the cuticle. The beautiful thing about gel is you can really take your time putting it on. There's no rush. The terrible French that I've done was not what I was focusing on. And once you make this a solid nail, it's beautiful. You can really see the coffin shape. It pulls it together. You really want to make sure you get it on all sides too. The underneath really is the feature on this nail. I do want to paint the tips too. It's a very finished look. certainly going to want to do two coats. Now, that's nothing against this particular brand. Pretty much any black you want to do two coats. Okay, I'm going to give these guys a nuke. seaweed top coat and you can use any you know gel of your choice I just happen to be using this brand okay we'll nuke that top coat and it also says for 30 seconds and that's a no wipe but we got one more thing we're gonna do Okay, now you can take a little bit of gel top coat and just give the underside a little bit of a, just a thin coat. Don't do a real thick coat. Just do a nice, gentle, thin coat. It will just help catch the light a little and just make you notice it a little bit more. Don't touch the skin though, because that won't look very good. But you do want to nuke that side. You don't nuke it down, you gotta nuke it toward the light. Now this is a no wipe, so you don't have to take off that sticky layer. 
so you can see how that catches the light a little. So obviously you're not walking around saying hello to everybody with this side of your hand, but if you're gesturing or something, that's when the light catches the color underneath. Now if I was to do it again, I did pick this red. If I was to do it again, I might pick a little bit more of a brighter red so you can catch your eye, but you can do all sorts of colors. You can do silver and white, that might be kind of cool. And yeah, that's really beautiful. Let's check out the reveal shots. Well, I'm much more comfortable wearing Louboutin nails that are long rather than the high heel shoes. <laughs> That's not good for me. Anyway, thank you for joining me in this video and I can't wait to see you guys in my next one.